Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good to see you this morning. Yeah. On this sunny day, 19th. What date is it today? 5th of April. April. Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. What do we do to say happy palms? Do we make the sign of the cross? How do we do you it? You wave a palm, but we haven't got one. <laughs> palm leaves. Palm. <laughs> Good morning. Great to see so many people on this morning yeah. from our six campuses. Yeah. Uh, Gateshead. Welcome, Gateshead. Woo! Uh, Bolton, uh, Blackpool campus, our uh, Wigan campus, our uh, Salford campus and our Persian campus. Hello to everybody out there today. Good Great morning. to see you in church. This is the yeah. place to be on Sunday morning, 5th of April. Good morning, Derek and Georgina. Morning. Morning, Adam. morning everybody. Hope you're well this beautiful sunny day. And morning to Paul and Meg all the way from Gateshead. Good morning. Our guests, our guests on our programme this morning. Our guest campus pastors, wonderful. Great to see you guys. Who's in today? Who's in the chat room today? Put your comments on the side pane. Let us see who you are. We'd love to hear from you this morning. Your comments, your questions. Good to see three, over 300 people on Facebook this yeah. morning. So share this page. Press share. Yeah. Share it to your profile. Let's get as many people on this morning from the country. Good to see you. Yeah. Listen, can I can I just bump in here? Um, just to say, during this morning's show on mine and Georgina's screen, four different animals will be making an appearance. They won't get introduced. If you, we're going to have a bit of a quiz. This is for the kids or the big kids with us all. Uh, if at the end of the show you can tell us on Facebook the four animals that make an appearance this morning on mine and Georgina's screen, me and Georgina are going to buy you an Easter egg. So this is for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and we will even deliver it. <laughs> it's an essential journey. You do Especially. know there were 5,000 viewers last week. Yeah, yeah. well, no, if it's the first ones, not everybody, right? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, not that bad either. Money. I'm not made of money. But the first <laughs> one, the let me know the four animals that come on my and Georgina's screen today, different animals, you'll win an Easter egg. Where are they going to come on your screen, Derek? Oh, they'll just bob along at the bottom, or they might appear at the top. Or they just, it, it's going to be, it's going to be very subversive. Sorry, I've never seen you so excited about something for a long time. I know, I don't know what it is about its isolation. I, I'm, I think I'm having a, I don't think I'm, am I cracking up? You love your animals. <laughs> Wherever he goes in the world, I mean, he went to Africa and he brought an animal which shall remain nameless because it might appear on the screen, and he got it wrapped and. And it's four delivered. foot four. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So. And I want to give a special welcome to all new people today, wherever you are, wherever you're yeah. joining yeah. us yeah. from the world. Yeah. Welcome to King's Church this morning. Great to see yeah. some of my extended family on from yeah. other parts of the country and some of my neighbours. Great to see you in church today. And um, if you're new to King's, please connect with us. Uh, email us at hello at kingschurchlife.com. We'd love to hear from you. You are our guest today. Relax, put your feet up chill out we're just going to enjoy church together this morning adam i've heard you've got a fantastic preacher this morning please put us out of misery tell us who is it <laughs> <laughs> who is the preacher today it's only our internationally renowned derek smith preaching. <laughs> i'm humbled i'm humbled all the way beaming from break mate in bolton to the world i'm humbled <laughs> Hey, last week we got more comments from America. Colorado watched you last week, Derek. Yeah, Colorado. yeah well, I'm big all over the world. You know, I'm, I'm a big spray me and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also want to also want to shout out to uh, all our extended Kings family, especially those this morning that uh, are feeling unwell. We're yeah. praying for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, we with you. We're believing for physical breakthrough as well. So we hope this encourages you today and it breathes life into your front room or your kitchen or your garden, wherever you are today. We yeah. are with you. And, we, and we, if we were here with you in person, we'd give you a virtual hug this morning. Yeah. And make sure you know you're not on your own in yeah. this. We are with you. And uh, we had a great day Friday, didn't we? Praying for all our NHS uh, yeah, champions. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you for standing with us in that. Um, we've got a lot coming up in the programme today. We're going to hear a great speaker, Derek Smith. 
We're going to hear um, from our campus pastors in Gateshead as well. What's the weather like in Gateshead? It's beautiful this morning, really, really oh, sunny. Yes. Can you not see the, the sun shining off this <laughs> shiny surface here this morning? <laughs> we can, Paul. We can actually. And we can see a little fuzz there as well. Yeah. Oh, terrible. We, we, oh. we, in Gateshead, we're growing it for God until we meet together again. So. <laughs> It's just, just the men, not the women. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else on this morning? Good to see. Good to see James Fernley on this morning. He says, "We love you, Derek. No likey, no lightly, lightly, lighty, lighty, lighty." I know. And Claire Harrison saying she wants a Gateshead accent. We all want a Gateshead <laughs> accent. Yeah. We all That's want a Gateshead accent. All right, okay. <laughs> Hi, Lynn Crawford from Gateshead. We still, we've just been talking about your props when you told your story. Props <laughs> <laughs> you got brought out of your bag. So just a big shout out to you in Gateshead, Lynn. <laughs> Number one has made an appearance. <laughs> oh dear. On. It's an earless one. Yeah. It's missing an ear. We take in all the weight and strength. Yeah, we do. Good to see so many of our Bolton family. Oh, look who else it is here this morning. Oh, <laughs> good morning. Hi, oh, John. hi, John. You all right? Yeah, I'm great. How's you look like you look like a mini me of your dad there, just behind. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. <laughs> oh, what have you shaved your head? Yeah, I did it on like day two. Day two of lockdown, the head has the head has been shaved. Paul, have you shaved your head? I did it last night, if you hadn't noticed, yes. <laughs> but for my appearance this morning. <laughs> so funny, so funny. George, why don't you kick us off this morning? Bring it spiritual, bring it spiritual. Absolutely, but I'm just conscious that Derek has got an animal ready to bounce <laughs> in the screen. <laughs> So don't do it yet. All right, we'll be serious. Serious. Yeah, where, serious. wherever you are in the world, in England, we just want you to know you are invited. Yeah. And you are included. Those are two words that were on my mind this week. That you are invited. You are not a spectator watching. Um, you are not a silent witness and just somebody observing what's going on. We just want you to feel so included and so invited this morning or these next 40 minutes. Um, just imagine and pretend that you were in my lounge. I've made you a brew, if you don't know what a brew is, because a lot of people don't know what a brew is. <laughs> you say a brew and they think you mean special brew, like lager or something. <laughs> but if you're from the north, you'll know what a brew is, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And I just want you to feel as though you've got your slippers on, you're in our lounge. You can even stay for virtual dinner. We've got roast beef in the oven. Ooh. Yeah, we have. And uh, yeah, you know, God loves you wherever you are in the whole spirit isn't just in this lounge or in Adam and Susie's lounge or Paul and Meg's lounge this morning he is with you wherever you are and you can feel the presence of God wherever you are in this time and God is very close to you and another word that was on my heart this week was that God is a very <laughs> stop it he's, got, he's ready to pounce with his animals no I'm not God is a very present help in times of trouble and it said you know it says here um in hebrews 2 verse 14 in the passion it says jesus became human to fully identify with us he identifies in our humanity this morning it says in verse 18 he suffered and endured every test and temptation so that he can help us yes every time we pass through the ordeals yeah. of life and we're going through some ordeals aren't we a lot of us are going through some ordeals of life it's gonna it's gonna end and it's gonna pass this season but wherever you are in your lounge or wherever you're viewing this in your garden or where, wherever I want you to know that God wants to help you it says yeah. in Psalm 46 verse 1 you're a proven help in times of trouble yeah. Another version says an ever present help. That means he wants to help today. Yes. And yeah. I just want to speak that word over all our, everybody who's watching, all our church congregation, because you are included, you are invited, and God wants to be a present help, a help to you today and to me today in this ordeal that we're all finding ourselves in. 
and I just want to believe and pray. Are you going to pray now? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. over us all. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that, Georgie. Father, we thank you for your presence with us, that you've not forgotten us, you've not forsaken us, but that you are with us. Mm. And God, we thank you that you're not just with us, but you're bringing us through mm. uh, this difficult season in our lives, in our families, in our nation. And we thank you that in difficult seasons, <laughs> we have your presence to hold on to. So bless the program this morning. Bless all those that are attaching themselves. May may they feel really included and welcome in your house, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brilliant. Let's let's ask Paul and Meg some questions about Gateshead. Yeah, well, last week we had Blackpool campus pastors, didn't we? And this week uh, we have got our uh, campus pastors from our furthest away campus, and it's also our newest campus as well which is Gateshead. So hi to everybody in Gateshead this morning and welcome Paul and Meg. We wanted to have a bit of a chat with you this morning and ask you some questions. So um, first of all, could you just share with us um, just some stories of inspiration? What's inspired you over the last couple of weeks, maybe within your campus at Gateshead, or it might be something nationally, some stories you've heard. Just tell us what, what things have inspired you over the last couple of weeks. I think for me, I think the community spirit that um, is going on is just incredible. Just, you know, we're not obviously not going out much, but um, we were out in the front garden the other day and some neighbours from further along the street stopped to have a chat with us. Never spoken to them before. Um, I just think this whole, you know, it's bringing people together, isn't it? This, Even though we're apart, it's actually bringing yeah. people together and, and chatting with one another. And, you know, when we're going out on walks, the things that you're seeing in people's windows, people waving to yeah. you, I just think it's it's fab just how people are encouraging one another. Yeah. And we, we, we uh, normally would run a food, uh, we would do breakfasts uh, for everybody on a Friday morning. And we get a lot of um, uh, food donated to us. One of the guys who has a sandwich company that we ought not to mention the name of um <laughs> he's still donating sandwiches to us and one of our guys one of our key leaders are, are still giving those out around uh, around the town so okay. it's really inspiring just to see people coming together and doing something when when they're getting nothing back from that yeah um it's right. great yeah Brilliant. good yeah and also um i remember adam was asking them um, pastor Derek and georgina the other night what are you missing during this um this time obviously there's a lot of things we normally do that we can't do and and what would you say you're missing during this time what you're looking forward to being able to do again when it's over gosh people people we we were asking the question this morning just to ourselves Meg said to me what are you missing I said I'm missing our people these are the people that you do life with yeah um and, and I started crying. I mean, I'm a real crybaby anyway, oh, but I, oh, I had some no. tears kind of down my face when I, you oh. think of the people that you do life with and and, and your friends and your family in church and stuff yeah. like that. And I just, you know, I started to fill up this morning. I just miss my family, my church family. Uh, they're great. We love them. And, uh, you know, it's the people that you miss and it's the yeah. connections that we have amongst ourselves. Um, yeah. you know, really miss our yeah. people being together and, 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 and just seeing faces and stuff. I look forward to um, being able to praise God again together, yeah, corporately, because yeah. yeah. it's not quite the same in your own house singing at the top of your voice. Mm-hmm. I really I need somebody to sort of drown me out. Just just singing at the top of your voice. It would take together. both John and I to drown her out. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've spoken to a few people this week and they're really missing, you know, just being able to see close friends and family and give them a hug. It is, it, yeah. you know, it's still quite early days, isn't it? But but yeah. people are feeling it already, that whole just not being able to, um, yeah. you know, see people and hug them. And we miss people, don't we? It is, yeah. it is strange. Yeah. It's that human connection, isn't it? We were yeah. built for, 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 you know, community. We, we, are, we are community people. And, and I miss it. I miss it. I miss being around the people that we, you know, that we love. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You can see them online, but it's not the same. You just kind of yeah. want to get in there and yeah. give them a hug. Yeah. Meg, yeah. tell the truth. What's it like self-isolating with Paul? <laughs> well, <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, both, we're both working from home. So 
um, during the week, Paul is up on the top floor in his office and I'm downstairs in the dining room. So we have, we are having a little bit of space. Yeah. But yeah, it's good to be able to just go out for a walk now and again. <laughs> <laughs> that was really tame. That was really nice to say that. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a question for you that we had planned to say, but I love throwing curveballs in. No. So, um, <laughs> Gateshead's been part of Kings now for three or four months. Um, what's the best thing about being part of a bigger family for, for, from, for you guys? Gosh, from a leadership perspective, um, you know... Being part of Kings is a massive thing for us now. Um, being being an independent church as we were before, all on our own, I couldn't, I, I, I don't want to think where we would be right now if we weren't joined to the larger Kings family. Me Meg and I have been out of action with the virus for two weeks, haven't seen anybody, haven't done anything, and but Kings has continued on. And I just think we, we've plugged into something we're part of a bigger family now that, that yeah. has much more resources. We are blessed to be a part really of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. We'd be running around ragged now, wondering <laughs> what on earth we could do. But we have confidence that we that, that, that the King's family is putting you know church on still and our congregations benefiting from that, even when we were in our you know, beds for two weeks, not yeah. feeling very well. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of something bigger because, because you know, the, there are talents and gifts and stuff that we are plugging into, which is just awesome for us. Mm. That's great. That's brilliant. Yeah. And we're glad you're part of us too. Yeah, we are. Um, it's not just the bigger swallows up the smaller. No. You're part of our family. It's all one. We, are, we yeah. say yeah, it's part of our mantra. It's one church. Yeah. And uh, yeah. though you may be, you know, a hundred yeah. odd miles away up in Gateshead, you're as much part of us as, as if you were sat here yeah, on the sofa absolutely. with me and Georgina. One church. And uh, let's believe God for future, you know, when all this is over. Campus 7, Campus yeah. 8, Campus 9, Campus okay. 10. Come on. Push forward. So we're glad We're glad you, we love you. We're glad you're part. We do love you. We love you, love you Paul. Oh, and our Gateshead family this morning. In fact, Church, if you're not from Gateshead and you're part of our King's family, why don't you give a special shout out to all our Gateshead family on our comments mm -hmm. frame this morning? Yeah. You, tell us where, you, where you're writing from, where you're watching from. We'd love to connect with you. So thanks for being with us this morning, guys. Yeah. Great to see you. You're looking well as well. You're looking really yeah. well. <laughs> Isolation is treating you well. <laughs> Can I just expose Paul and Meg as well to a bit of scandal? Uh, we like a bit of scandal. Is uh, when you look at them, you think they're in their lounge. Yeah. <laughs> place behind them. I know because I've been to their house. They're in their bedroom. How do you know? How do you know that? <laughs> I know that because I went and had a tooth. No, I don't really. I mean, so I know that's your bedroom. So all the way from Paul and Meg's bedroom in Gateshead. Thank yeah. you for being with us. And, and thank God you got dressed. Because that would have been yeah. it. that would yeah. be my crash TV. So Meg and Paul have the most gorgeous house. It's Victorian, and oh. she's got the most beautiful taste. Oh. You, you tell people what they don't know. <laughs> they might not know something about them. What's <laughs> 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 that going on? <laughs> I think that was the last one, wasn't it, Derek? <laughs> That's the last one. First one's going to get us an Easter egg. <laughs> Derek, people are putting actual um. What are they call emojis with the correct animal on oh, the. Oh, no, I don't need emoji on it written down. <laughs> right, no emojis, just the words, please, people. Yeah, and I'm, well, going to, I'm going to be very diligent. Who, who was the first one with all four Easter egg? Oh, listen, Danny. Danny, Danny well, Iceland. Quite a few put it, actually. Quite a few put it. Five well, minutes good. time. We're going to oh, launch oh, a minute. Steve, Eden. Steve Eden. it could be Steve Eden. He's oh. still looking for comments. <laughs> we'll have to ask our moderator who the first few were. <laughs> We'll we'll around delivering Easter eggs for There's going to be a war on Facebook as to who was the first person that spotted it. I don't know, I don't know. Claudia's doing well. Claudia, yeah, Claudia's doing good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, somebody's put, somebody, somebody's put donkey. Listen, listen, <laughs> you are on drugs. There was no donkey. <laughs> if you saw a donkey this morning, you need to go to the doctors, ring 111. There was no donkey. Oh, oh my We've word. been in isolation too long. We are. We're cracking up. We're cracking but up. listen, five minutes time, we're going to launch the ministry. Five minutes time. So, a few things to let you know about church. But first thing is, if you've not got your Bible with you this morning, go and grab it. 
from whatever yeah. is in the house. Make sure you've got a Bible for this message because the message is going to be brilliant and be rooted in scripture. So make sure you get hold of that. Two quick things for me. Um, if you are from King's Church, you may know this, but for everybody, we have relaunched our website homepage. So if you are struggling to find out stuff that's online, if you go to our new website page today, everything is on there. There are buttons for connect groups, which start on Tuesday, which we'll tell you about in a second. There's also buttons for our different online services and also a blog page from our senior pastors. So make sure you check that out. And then also, Friday just gone, we prayed for all the NHS and care staff. Yeah, Thank you for praying with us. It was great to see so many of you get in touch and, and pray with us and stand with us in prayer for our NHS and care staff. This Friday coming, we are going to be praying for families, for children and young people, all those homeschooling, all the children that may be vulnerable at the moment, homeschooling, yeah. we're going to pray for them. So make sure you check out our Facebook page and Instagram feed on Friday for more information about that, but get it in your diary this Friday coming, prayer and fasting. Connect groups. Connect groups. Yeah, it's been brilliant to see so many of you sign up online already for online connect groups, but it's still not too late. If you go to our website, we are launching this Tuesday night on Zoom, eight o'clock, uh, online connect groups as we've put our dinner parties on pause. So please, please, please um, get connected if you are not in one already and you would like to just have that sense of community online and just continue to... to um, what's the word the habit keep the habit keep, keep the, the habit, habit. Keep, keep the, the habit. habit of meeting together uh so yeah please sign up on the website and you will be allocated into a group That'd yeah be great. If you can't find that it's a button on our home page connect groups and you can go straight into there next weekend's easter derrick isn't it it is and we're so looking forward i'm just watching on the uh on the facebook feed and somebody's put they saw a donkey because it's palm sunday <laughs> How spiritual is that? That's very they're, spiritual. They're obviously from the Bolton campus, being that <laughs> spiritual. So, well, listen, we're, we're so excited about Easter. Yeah. Um, we're so sorry we can't be all together, but we're going to have a great Easter. Um, on Good Friday, at different times, all our campuses are doing their own Good Friday service. I know Bolton are running three. Uh, the other campuses are doing their services online. So get in touch with them. They'll, yeah. through social media, they'll let you know what time they're meeting and it'll be great. I think they're going to take communion together. Yeah. It, will be, it will be absolutely awesome. And then Easter Sunday, we're going to all come together. We're going to have a great time next Sunday celebrate, celebrating the resurrection. And, uh, you know, the resurrection is about new beginnings. It's about second chances. Yeah. It's about what comes next. It's about what's beyond the death of the grave. And yeah. So let's celebrate what's beyond all this, all the blessings and the life that's beyond all this. So, um, yeah, great. Let, and can I just, I'm, I'm always asking, can I? I am. <laughs> I am. I'm just going to say this for 30 seconds. Yeah. If, you're, um, if you're watching uh, this morning and you're not generally part of King's Church, you're just a bit bored in isolation and you, know, you keep flicking on and, and, and watching. Can we just say to you that we, we're we here for you and um, we want to see you when we're out yeah. of this. Keep keep meeting with us on social media. But when we're out of this, we want to see you physically as well and come to yeah. one of our campuses. Yeah. Don't yeah. just don't just be online. We want to see you part of our yeah. church, part of what we're doing. And uh, I know stepping into a church can be a massive step. But hey, what about making that decision about you're going to take that step of faith? Yeah. When all this is over, you're going to have to get dressed, get in your car yeah. on a Sunday morning and get down to one of our campuses. I'll guarantee you two things. One is you will be welcome. And secondly, you'll be blessed. That's what I guarantee you. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're going to get ready for the message now from Derek. So make sure your Bible's open. It's going to be a fantastic message. It's called Restri Resistance. Resistance. I nearly called it something else then, Derek. It's called Resistance. And it's a great message based on Mark chapter four. So we're going to have a great time around God's word. If you want to stay in touch with any of these messages, they're going to be on our website and on our YouTube stream. And you can go back in the archive. If you're brand new this morning and want to dig back in, all our messages are on there and on our podcast. You can stay connected. And if you want any further information, go to our website, kingschurchlife.com forward slash connect with us. And we would love to stay in touch with you. Great. And the final thing is before we go to the live feed is um, you may be wondering when you're watching why people are sat so close to each other in uh, yeah. as I'm preaching. This oh. was done the day before we went into isolation, yeah. knowing we're going to go into isolation. But I had you on mind 
when I did this. God bless you. Brilliant. Meg, why don't you pray for us as we get ready to listen to the message? Father, I want to thank you for this special day. I want to thank you that you're a good God. Lord, I pray as the word goes out now, Lord, that, that people's hearts and minds will be open to what you have to say. Yeah. Father, we believe yeah. that you love us and that you care for us. Right. Father, I pray that we will be challenged today, that we'll be encouraged today. Yeah. Father, that lives will be changed today. I pray for salvation today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Enjoy the message. We'll see you back here afterwards as we chat through it. Enjoy it. Let's go for it. everybody great to see you all i'd like you to turn in your bible to mark chapter 4 we're going to read a short passage of scripture something that happened to uh, jesus with his disciples one day so reading from mark chapter 4 from verse 35 it says this that day when evening came jesus said to his disciples let's go over to the other side leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was in the boat there were also other boats with him a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Well, it is good to see you. And I want to talk to you uh, today for a few minutes about the subject of resistance. Um, resistance is a really interesting subject because when I say the word resistance, you think, well, that's, that's a negative word. Resistance means something coming against you, something stopping you doing what you want to do. Re you know, if I said to anybody in here or watching, um, who likes resistance? People would say, of course not. Um, if I said, how many people here would love a bit more resistance? People would think, well, that's uh, it's not what I would want. Um, last year, my, uh, my uh, wife went on a holiday uh, to Mexico. And uh, we got to the airport early, as we do, when we got on the plane. And it was a, a big plane. There was over 300 passengers on the plane. We put our seatbelt on and we were ready. Um, and then you do what you always do when you're on a plane. You, you look what's in the pocket in front and you get everything out and you, you read it all. And you end up reading some really bizarre stuff you would not read. You read you read, uh, you know, um, you read the uh, how, how to get out the plane if it lands on water. That's not really what you want to read just before takeoff and everything. And then I turned it over and read the other side and then thought, well, that's a bit boring. Put that back. And then I got the in-flight entertainment out, looked at the movies that were on, uh, checked which ones I wanted to watch. And then I there was another magazine in all about the aircraft you were on. And it was describing the aircraft because it was so big and it was a pretty new one and it was one of the uh, best ones in the fleet and everything. And I read something that was really interesting. Um, because you're thinking, how can 300 people with 300 suitcases, and if my wife had been on, there'd have been more than 300 suitcases <laughs> on, uh, all get on a plane with all the food and all the fuel and this big metal tube ends up going in the sky and flying for nine hours and then lands in Mexico and everybody's okay with that. And it, as I read this all about this manual about this certain plane, it was talking about the plane can only get off the ground because it relies on resistance to get off the ground. In other words, 
When the jets, it's not the jets of the plane that lift the plane into the sky. The jets just give it speed. It's the resistance the plane comes ac across that lifts it. So that's when you're hurtling down the motorway. You know, just, th just that moment, just before you take off and you go from moving quickly along the runway to, to into that position, just that moment, it's because the resistance is greater than the thrust of the plane and so it forces the resistance under the wings the plane to rise and for nine hours hundreds of tons of metal and people and food and petrol and suitcases are in the air why because resistance carries them to the place they want to go in this passage we just read we read a day of resistance to something that Jesus had said you see Jesus got up one morning with his disciples and he said this um, we are going over to the other side. Now this wasn't, they just got up and decided this would be a good idea. Jesus said, it's in red in my Bible, we are going over to the other side. Yeah. It's interesting to know in, in your life that faith doesn't make things easy, it makes things possible. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you get resistance to certain things in life doesn't mean what you're doing is wrong. In mm -hmm. fact, the resistance that you face in doing things sometimes is the very thing that God uses to get you off the ground. Resistance doesn't have to be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So here in this passage we just read, Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. He gets in the boat, Jesus obviously gets into the stern, gets his blanket out, gets his pillow out, and he's taking a nap. And then the disciples are in the boat, they are rowing it over, or maybe the wind is taking the sails. And as they're going over, a furious squall uh, breaks out. A furious, um, the wind, there was turbulence, there was water coming over the sides of the boat. There was incredible resistance to them getting to the other side. And I wonder if you're anything like me, uh, particularly when I was first a Christian many, many years ago, when I was doing things for God, I used to say to myself, why, if I'm doing God's will, is it so hard? Yeah. Why, if God has asked me to do this, is it not plain sailing? Is it not easy? Why does it not just all fall into place? Why does it sometimes feel like in order to do what God says, I've got to go through this storm? This storm is not supposed to sink you. This storm is supposed to to lift you. We go through things in life that sometimes are not very comfortable and sometimes we don't fully understand, not to destroy us, but to lift us, to raise us, to grow us, so that we can learn things. You learn more in a storm than you ever do um, when everything is going really well. To get back to when we went to Mexico on holiday, uh, we had a great two weeks in Mexico. And then on the flight back, um, we were probably halfway in. I, I'm really good at sleeping on, um, on airplanes. I, I don't worry at all. I just want to know somebody's driving it. It's not me. I'm okay with that. So I'm fast asleep. And um, I was fast asleep. I was having a brilliant dream. And I think Georgina was asleep next to me. And then the stewardess, came and woke me up. And uh, she woke me up because she wanted me to put my seatbelt on. Halfway through the flight, we were mid-Atlantic, and she said this, there's turbulence ahead. Um, this things may get a little shaky. I want you to fasten your seatbelt. Everything's gonna be fine, but please can everybody fasten your seatbelt. So I was asleep thinking everything was fine, and it was the turbulence that woke me up to the point where I had now to take some action. It was only to do that and fasten my seatbelt and then I could go back to sleep. And you know, in life, when we're going through storm, turbulence and resistance and, and things toss us around and throws about and, and, and sometimes it can feel very, very uncomfortable. But it doesn't mean that God has not planned for us to get to the other side. Right. We're going through troubled times in our, our world as we speak. You know what? We're going to get to the other side, not because our trust is in scientists to work it all out 
as good as they are and as much as we pray for them. Not because the government are going to sort it all out. I'm going to the other side because I believe Jesus has got something better for us, better for me, better for my family, better for us as a church, at the other side of this storm that we are called to go through. So resistance doesn't have to destroy you, it can lift you. Turbulence is not there because you're doing anything wrong. It's because you are going on a journey. You know what? I have never been sat on a runway in a plane when they've told me um, uh, there's going to be turbulence on the runway. There's no turbulence on the runway. There's no resistance on the runway. The sign of turbulence and resistance means this. You are moving. Yeah. You are moving. Yeah. When your life faced resistance and challenge, you know what? Thank God. Why? Because you're not stood still. Because nothing stood still has resistance. But things, when they are moving, have resistance. So I've just jotted down very quickly four quick things I want to leave with you uh, so that we can get hold of these in the storms and understand them so that next time we're going through something, we don't fall apart thinking, oh, God has left me. Because there's good news and bad news. If you're not in a storm, don't worry, you will be soon. And if you're in a storm, don't worry, there's the other side to this. So four quick things. Number one is storms are compulsory for movers. Storms are compulsory for movers. So if you're going to move, if you're going to progress, if you're going to grow as a Christian, if your family's going to make great progress, if you're going to start that ministry, if you're going to pioneer that business, there will be storms that happen. And it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's because you are moving. Storms don't necessarily mean you're doing everything right. They just mean you are moving in a direction. So my suggestion to you is if you're facing storms, Fasten your seatbelt and keep going. If you're facing resistance, fasten your seatbelt and keep going. The second point I wanted to throw in with you is this, that sometimes when you're going through turbulence and storms, it can feel like Jesus is inactive. Have you ever gone, be going through something in your life and you end up thinking, Jesus, where are you? I'm doing this for you, and it feels like you're asleep to my pain. You're asleep to all the resistance I'm feeling. Well, did the disciples not feel like this? I don't know about you, but when I read the Bible, I, I like to think about what they were thinking about. I like to think about what was happening around the text, not just happening in the text. I don't know if the people on the boat, when this furious storm broke, started to have a conversation, and it went something like this. Where is he? Who? You know who. Jesus, where is he? He's all right. He, he was there when there was no trouble. He was there when we were all having breakfast on the beach. Oh, yeah, he had the fish. The minute there's trouble, where is he? It's not that the question that most of our world ask in times of yeah. Where's God? Where's God in my pain? Where's God in my resistance? Where's God in the turbulence of this life? And where was God? He's asleep. He's totally fast asleep in the boat. Let me say this to everybody going through things. Is this. It's not that Jesus is inactive. He is with you. His promise is, I will never leave you and never forsake you. Yeah. I hear people say, uh, well, many people say, oh, I feel so far from God. Well, he lives inside of you. How close do you want to be? God is with you. But there are times when we, we need to be aware of his presence and almost like wake, not wake Jesus up because he's inactive, but wake us up to the fact that we need him. We can't do this in and of ourselves. We need Jesus not just to be in our boat 
as our saviour, but we need to be leading the boat as our Lord. We need to constantly be doing things that rely on Jesus, who is with us and in us and for us yeah. and wants to get us to the other yeah. side. It's in the times of trial and turbulence in your life, you need to say to you, it was Jesus that said on the beach, we are going to the other side. Yeah. On my journey and the journey of me and Georgina over many years of building kings, in the quietness of my own office at home or my own walk or running somewhere around Bolton or in the quietness of my own thoughts, I have often asked, God, I need you. Where are you? Because I cannot do this. We cannot do this without you moving powerfully. Listen, God is always with us. Yeah. He's always with us. Yeah. And sometimes we just need to remember. So the disciples must have rushed to Jesus and said, Jesus. And then this is, this is another thing that's quite negative. They questioned his character. Don't you care? And often when we go through trials and turbulence, sometimes it, we can come to the wrong conclusion that Jesus doesn't care because he hasn't sorted it all out for us. So when they said to him, Jesus, don't you care if we drown? Jesus rebuked them for having little faith. And he, I can imagine him coming out of the stern of the boat, waking up, coming out, all the storm, and then he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the waves. And the Bible says it became completely calm. And when he had brought calm to the environment, he then turned to the disciples and he said to them, Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. He not only, you know, sometimes you say he rebuked the storm. Let me tell you who he rebuked most the disciples for not doing what they had the power to do if they only realise it's not Jesus doing it for you, it's Jesus doing it through you. And we as New Testament Christians realise is this, Jesus is in the boat of your life right now. He's in the turbulence of your situation. And he's not going to do it for you, he's going to do it through you. And, and, and you've got to learn some things in this storm that will really help us. Third thing is this. Lack of faith always wants to blame other things, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, the disciples, well, we're in this mess and it's, it's, it's you know, it's the storm's fault. It's, it's, you know, it's Peter, you must have sinned. It's, you know, it's the pigeon's fault. It's, it, it's, what, it's somebody else's fault all the time. And, and looking for things to blame. No, Jesus didn't blame all the things around them. He talked about their confession. Yeah. Yeah, very it's almost like he said, what did I tell you on the beach? We're going to the other side. Right. Have I changed my mind? No. Get on with it. Now, that's the Derek Smith paraphrase. But if God has said you're going to the other side, guess where you're going? You're going to the other side. If God says it, we've got to agree with it and believe he is with us and he is bringing us through the turbulence and the storms into the fullness of what he has at the other side of the resistance and at the other side of the storm. Great. Fourthly is this, some storms you have to learn to speak to. You know, some storms we uh, are things that we go through that are just common to man, they're, they're things, you know. But some storms, actually, we need to do what Jesus did and learn to speak to and say, we are not having that. Yeah. I think as families that are attached to King's Church right now, I think it's a good confession to say over your family and your household, no, we're not having fear. We're not having sickness. We're not having death. We're not having, we're not having all the negativity that goes with what's happening in our world at this moment. You need to have a positive confession, a Jesus confession, a going to the other side confession upon your lips so that we can speak to the mess. Storms don't define you. You just go through them. And so a storm does not make me, it doesn't destroy me, it just brings me through at the other side with a bigger confidence yeah. in God. Yeah. Let me conclude with this. And it's a throwaway line in what we just read. And it says this, there were other boats with them. Let me ask you a question. The other boats didn't have Jesus in them. 
So when the storm came, where did they turn? Because they were all in this, but Jesus was only in one boat. The Bible doesn't tell us what happened to the other boats, whether they were trashed on the rocks or they sank, or, or Jesus, you know, shouted out, don't worry, I'm on this boat, but I'll help you as well. The Bible doesn't tell us. But I wonder when they were panicking in their boats, who did they awaken? Because Jesus wasn't in their boat. You know, the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is not that Christians are better. It's not that Christians are nicer. It's not that Christians are do more. It's not a lot of stuff that often we think is. The difference between fundamentally a Christian and a non-Christian is this. It's nothing to do with our goodness. It's to do with his presence. Yes. Yeah. Either Jesus is in your boat or he's not. And my question to you as we conclude is this. When the storms and turbulence of this life hit your world, who are you going to turn to? Who are you going to awaken within you? Who are you going to be confident in to say, in the middle of my storm, who said to me, I am going to the other side? And if you're not a Christian, or you're not a person of faith, or you're not as sure if you are, and, and you're watching or you're listening, maybe we could do something about that today. Let me pray as I conclude, and thank you for watching, and thank you for listening. Father, I want to thank you for your goodness, that you are a God that brings us through the storms and turbulence of life. Yes. Father, I thank you for resistance, because resistance can lift us to heights that we would have never been able to achieve. Resistance can take us to places we could have never gone. So, God, we don't always like it, but we need it. So, Lord, we pray that you will help us have an understanding of that when we're going through tough times, it's not that you've got out the boat, you're in the boat with us. Help us to be aware of your presence, even in times when we're going through the worst that life can throw at us. Bless all those that are part of our King's family. Bless all those that are wider than watching. Bless our government and our nation and our world at this time. And may we come through this turbulence and come through all that we're going through and come out better on the other side. In the name of Jesus we ask it. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Brilliant, Derek. Thanks so much for that message. And yeah. just joining us now, just to remind you that that was a pre-recorded message we recorded a couple of weeks ago. That's why everyone was so close together. Um, but just again, two weeks ago, we didn't even foresee what had happened this past, these next two weeks. So that is such a relevant message for today. Um, so I want to pick up on a few things, um, guys, that we, we listen to there and, and throw them out for discussion. And if you're in your home, maybe these are some of your notes as well, because there's some good stuff to talk through. On the back of that, it gives us a lot of questions. One particular thing you said, Derek, was that faith doesn't always make things easy, but it does make things possible. And I want to talk about the nature of faith in the storm, because faith is an internal thing. It's not dependent on what happens outside of us. Mm. So what does faith make possible? Kick us off there, and then we'll, we'll see where the conversation goes. Yeah. I think faith, faith, when you strip it all away, is what are you anchoring your very existence yeah. to? Yeah. That's what faith is. What, <clears throat> what, when, when everybody's quiet, when your circumstances are not going well, when things look set against you what what is your default setting yeah and um i think ultimately that is um faith is the assurance of things we hope for the certainty of what we cannot see that's what you know hebrews tells us and i think faith is it, it comes down to that thing in your gut that gets you out of bed yeah. in the morning to do yeah. that thing you don't want to do um faith is that thing that makes you go beyond when your human limitations make you want to. Faith is that it's a, a deep guts mm. driving force. Um, and I think when we talk about faith in the context of Christian faith, it's because it's, it's the God who lives inside of us 
Um, and that's that's our motivation. It's God. It's, you know, in the Old Testament, God was with them. In the New Testament, God's in us. Yeah. It's different. And, um, and and that's that's what faith is. It's stripping it all away and knowing. Uh, and, you know, even over the last 15 years or nearly 15 years as we've been building kings, you know, there are days in those 15 years when I've got up and said, right, God, if nobody's here, if it's just down to yeah. me and Georgina, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, why? Because yeah. when everything's gone, it's that inner thing. Yeah. And also, I think it's important because you don't need much faith. Yeah. And I yeah. think we think we've got to have a huge lot of faith. But the Bible talks about faith as small as a mustard seed. Yeah. And that's a tiny, tiny thing. So there might be people watching and think, well, I don't feel as though I've got your kind of faith, Pastor Derek, or your kind of faith. And I think it's important to know that we only need a little bit and it's just a step, um, take that first step of faith. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to know that, you know, yeah. it's not always this huge thing that some people have and some people don't. We just need a tiny bit of yeah. faith. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really easy to put limitations on ourselves. You know, we, we tell ourselves things like, you know, I can't do this or I can't do that. Faith allows us to take a step into the unknown, doesn't it? Yeah, it allows us to go into something knowing full well that, you know, the answer isn't fully up to us. All we've got to do is step into some things and God's there with us. So faith, faith helps us to step into things instead of staying out of things. I love faith. It's great. Brilliant. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And it's not about just having faith for faith's sake. It's faith in something. And that's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Faith in all sorts of things. When going through storms. But faith in Jesus is what makes a difference. And I think that's yeah. really important because there's a world which puts faith in all sorts of positive self-help stuff or just you know being being yeah. optimistic yeah. This is that person in Jesus. And I think yeah. that's really important. Yeah. And I think something else you said, Derek, was that storms, um, storms don't always yeah. sink you, but they do bring out of you what's in you. And I think that's really important because when the pressure's on, when you get squeezed often what you really put your faith in comes out. Mm. Yeah. True, isn't that true with storms and the storm we're going through now? What people really believe comes out of them. What, what, yeah. what would you reflect on that, guys? Yeah, yeah I, think, I, I, I think when everything's stripped back, like I said previously, what you, you go back to what you put faith in. And as you said, our, our world says, uh, as long as you've got faith, that's okay, and if your faith's in this, no, no, your faith's only as good as what you've put it in. Yeah. If you put your faith in, you know, yeah. th there's there's a lot of people put the faith about a hundred years ago in the Titanic, and they went down with it. Yeah, uh, it's only as good as what you put your faith in, and and so it's not for me just faith in faith. It's faith in something that's sure in for, in the, in our context yeah. in in Jesus. We have put our faith um, in Jesus, and I think because it's a person because it's a relationship, because he is real, because he is God, yeah. because he is all powerful, we've attached ourselves to, to that. And so when we're going through all the kind of storms that life throws at us, because it's a personal relationship and God doesn't get freaked out when we, when we get freaked out. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's okay to fall apart a little bit um that's okay god doesn't go oh you are you're hopeless he goes yeah okay i get it you're going through the storms but i'm here for you the disciples in the text we just read they fell apart but jesus yeah. didn't and, mm -hmm. and you know during whatever season of life you're going through in all the isolation or it might be health issues it might be fear about uh, a loved one who's 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 in self-isolation maybe vulnerable it's this it's jesus has got this yeah. Jesus has got this. And your job is not to worry. Your job isn't even to help Jesus. Mm. <laughs> your job is to trust him. Yeah. That's all he wants you to do. He doesn't need your help. Yeah. Just wants you to trust him. And those that trust him get to the other side. So that's what we're really uh, believing for. Yeah. And when the squeeze is on, you know, the real you comes out. And just be careful mm. of that. You know, sometimes it, it might shock you what comes out of you, good and bad. Yeah. And our nation is being squeezed now. And isn't it true? We watch the news. We see the good and bad. We see people that are doing incredible things. And we see people that are just being stupid and floating the, 
the regulations uh, and being totally selfish and um you know shops yeah. that has come it's funny I, i'm i'm one of these people i'm always talking to the television yeah. shops in at the television and on the news the other day was uh, this shop that was selling things so extortionally yeah. expensive yeah. and you know my answer isn't you know we close or anything we just remember who did it yeah. and when we're out of this we never shop there again why because there's good and bad in this season mm -hmm. and uh, we've just got to hold on to him that comes through and his name is Jesus. Let me throw in a, a deeper theological question on a Sunday morning. You ready for this? Oh, ready. <laughs> to, what, to what extent does thinking about the storm we're in, and it is a storm, it's unpredictable, it's chaotic, it can be quite dark for some people. To what extent does God allow storms like this to happen? And to what extent does he use them to produce stuff in us? Because he does do that, doesn't he? Yeah. He doesn't make stuff happen just for the sake of it. But often God uses things like with context we're in now to produce something. To what yeah. extent do you think that's true? Oh, well, I don't want to answer everything, but I'm I'm you know, I'm on it. Uh, <laughs> well, let me, well, tell you what. Let me ask Georgina. Yeah. You, oh. you, yeah, you, I, I definitely think God does teach us things in storms because He was teaching His disciples. Um, you know that He allowed that storm, and He wanted really it was a test to see whether they could handle the storm because oh. they had all the faith that, you know, they, they had Jesus in the boat. And I think God tests us and he allows storms to come in our life. And like you said, sometimes the worst comes out of us as well mm. during those times when the squeeze is on. Yeah. Learn, it's like the toothpaste when you squeeze it, you know, whatever is in that tube comes out. Um, yeah, so I think he does allow storms in our life. He's always got us and he's there in the storm, but he wants, it's a, it's almost like he's teaching us what to do. Do you really trust me? Do you really, because when you're stripped of everything, maybe you've been putting your faith in your job, in your bank balance, in your business, in your role in life, or whatever, you don't sometimes know that you're putting your faith in those things. Mm. So I think God sometimes allows those things to be taken from us so that we totally trust him yes. when everything else yeah. has gone. Um, <coughs> that we're not putting our value in, in what we do in life, but we're yeah. putting our value in the fact that God loves us, yeah. full stop, in yeah. who we are in God. Um, and I think those, yeah, definitely, I think he does allow storms to come up in life. I think he's always in control. Yeah. He's always yeah. in control. Um, so that's important. But yeah, I definitely think he wants to teach us how to handle things. And when we've gone through a storm and sometimes we've not handled it right, I think the next time we go through another storm, we learn. Yeah, we do. And we think, I won't do that again. I did that wrong. I, I didn't trust God enough, or you know, I fell apart. And I think we learn, we get better. And faith, by the way, I said it, it doesn't matter if it's small, and it doesn't, but it grows. Very yeah. good. It grows by understanding on a journey of faith that you see God come through for you. I remember God, you know, God didn't let us down then, and then He comes through for you again when you put your trust in Him, and it, faith grows through trusting in his word as well, right. getting more of his word in there. So it doesn't always stay, it doesn't stay small. That's mm. what I'm saying, it grows. And what's true is there's such a link between God's faithfulness and our faith. And often it's by looking back on what God's done and trusting in his character, yeah. and trusting in his goodness and seeing his promises never fail. Yeah. It gives us faith for the future. We're not meant to have faith in the vacuum. We're meant to have faith by perspective, mm. seeing what God's done and promising what he's going to do. So yeah. we have to always reflect on God's faithfulness, like you said, Georgina. So let me ask, let me ask another question, maybe to Paul and Meg and Susie as well. One of the things in the story that Derek preached on was when Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. He spoke to the storm. Yeah. How, how do we do that? How do we as Christians learn to speak to the storm in our lives? Because that's a really important part of faith, that it doesn't just stay in our heart, it comes out of our mouth. So how do we do that? Go on, Meg, Paul, you go for it first. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things about faith is um, it's an active thing, isn't it? And um, I know my sister's watching today, and one of the things that our mum used to say to us when we were younger was faith feeds on the promises of God and what she meant by that was 
um, you know, you've got to know the word of God. You've got to know what God is saying about something. Just like the disciples in the, in the boat, you know, they knew what Jesus had said to them. They, they just forgot it for a while. We have to keep coming back to the word of God all yeah. the time, to his promises. And um, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> but like speaking to the storm, how, how do you... Yeah, you've got, you, you have got to speak to your storm. You've got to remember what God has done in the past. You know, look back on those yeah. things, you know, because I think there's some amazing... I look back and, and at some times and some difficulties we've gone through, just like everybody else does, financial difficulties. I remember, you know, situations where... Um, God absolutely has come through for yeah. us in an incredible way. And we do have to speak and we do have to, to say, you know, I trust in God. I, I yeah. trust that yeah. he's going to sort this out for me. I believe what the word of God says. And yet you have got to speak to those things mm -hmm. and remind yourself God has been faithful in the past. He, he's yeah. a faithful God. He will continue to be yeah. faithful. Yeah, very good. And, and I think it's important, you know, we're talking about speaking into situations like that. You, you got to learn to speak to yourself yeah, in yeah, those situations because yeah. it, it, it's me that faces the situation. So I have to speak to myself. I, 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 remember, I mean, in a previous job, I used to fly a lot and I used to fly into Bilbao Airport in Spain, one of the worst airports to, to fly into. Interesting, Derek was preaching on this earlier, but uh, Quite often the plane would go in sideways. If you watch the videos on YouTube, it's it's shocking. I never knew that um, until I used to fly. But once I figured it out, once I realized that, I used to tell myself something. My my future isn't based. It isn't in the hands of the pilot. It's in the hands of God. Yeah. So I used to speak to myself. God's got this. God's got me. If he wants me home, he'll take me home. And if he doesn't, I'm here. It's, it's an art. Be, having peace in that kind of a situation is just based in the fact that God's in control and you've got to keep telling yourself that time yes. and time again, God's got this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you one last question. So imagine you're in a storm, you're on a boat and you're starting to feel seasick mm. and you're starting to feel really unwell and everything's rocking and you just can't find that sense of stillness. How do you do that spiritually in the middle of what's going on and if you fix your eyes on the world around you, you can just sit, sense this sense of dis, dis ease. How do you still yourself and this gift of isolation that we've been given in one sense? How do we still ourselves in this storm to make sure that in ourselves we've got the stillness of God? Maybe Susie and Georgina, you could you could answer that because I know this is a big part of you've talked about this before, haven't you? Of course, Susie, you go. Yeah, I think um, going back to the last question about speaking to the storm, it's it's similar, isn't it? We did a message just before this this whole thing kicked off about shouting louder, and it's it's what you're letting shout loud in your mind, yeah. and it's what you're speaking out, and it's mm. what you're focusing on. And uh, if you imagine a magnifying glass, what are we what are we magnifying? Are we magnifying what we can see, the challenges, the things around us, which the, the bad things are not coming from God. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God. So good things come from God and, and bad things come from somewhere else, come from an, an, an enemy that we believe exists. Um, so we believe that good things come from God. God can work things for good and he can Amen. teach us uh, through anything. But finding that sense of stillness is what are we fixing our minds and our hearts on? What are we anchoring our, our minds on? Because as Georgina said the other day, if we just watch the news all the time or if our work Words are negative mm. we're going to descend in our minds to a place of seasickness mm. and, and negativity and you know all those kind of uh, negative thoughts so it's what we're anchoring our minds on and um, getting in the word and mm. um, listening to worship music and and just declaring out positive things and doing that each and every day because it's a battle it always mm. is but in this time it's it, we have to really let our faith be real and and yeah. you know we either believe this or we don't yeah. and we've got the bible yeah. set and the bible's full of so many promises to enable us to live in a place of rest a mm. place of peace and a place of joy whatever mm. we whatever we're facing i was reading a verse this week that talks about um, those who take refuge and those who trust in God will rejoice. Brilliant. And that means we can mm -hmm. rejoice 
even when we're needing to take refuge yeah. when we're going through a challenge mm. we can still yeah. have joy and yeah. we still have the right to live in that whatever mm. is going on around us and this is a good opportunity mm. to actually live those things out and see that these promises are real and that mm. they work in our lives mm. so Very yeah good. How would you add to that, Georgia, you know, and we can land our discussion there? Well, that was brilliant, Susie, really. You've said everything I was going to say, but sure, I think when I'm ever panicking or fear ever comes in my life or I'm hurting and we're all human, we all have these emotions, no matter how long we've been walking with God, I think I, the sense of stillness, to breathe in and to breathe in God, and to get in a quiet place and just, the Bible talks about the still, small voice. Yeah. And in what Susie's saying, all that loud and, you know, your own thoughts can be shouting louder, but to still everything and to speak to the storm, be quiet. Very good. Be yeah. quiet, storm. Yeah. And get in that stillness with God and breathe God in, in and listen to that still, small voice. What is <laughs> saying to you in this moment really? and then you'll hear those small little whispers of encouragement mm. of love of messages it's going to be all right you're going to come through this and mm. the promises of God as well like Susie have said you know in the word the come to your remembrance yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. well let me just pray before we move on from this and this morning if this has helped you please let us know and if you need prayer for anything, please email us at pray at kingschurchlife.com or go to our website and click on the prayer link. We'd love to stand with you because this is real life. You know, what ha what's happening in the outside world is real and it impacts us all in different ways. And often God uses it to provoke things in us. And one way he does that is by growing our faith. So why don't we just pray for a moment, wherever you are, just still yourself for a few seconds, if you can, if you can get mm -hmm. that privacy in your home. And I'm going to pray for you as we finish. God, I want to thank you for this message. Thank you, God, that you bring us peace that passes understanding. Yes. Lord, and when you spoke to the storm, God, you spoke with authority, confidence, a sense of presence, Lord, in what you were saying uh, to the storm that was raging around that boat. And Lord, we, in the same way today, we can't change what's happening around us. But what we can do is speak to the storm within our soul and say, still, be still. And God, we pray that the resistance around us would provoke us to move our faith yes. and to move forward, God, to not stay still, not just to stay stagnant, but to move to the other side, God. Thank you. You've got a purpose in every pain we go yeah. through, God. You can yeah. redeem anything for your glory, God. So we just speak over that this morning in Jesus' name. <coughs> Amen. 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 Brilliant. Thanks Amen. for that, guys. Before you go this morning, do, do not rush off. We've got a few more things to talk about. Uh, we're going to finish at half 11 when we're going to put our kids program live. So don't leave us till then. But we're going to give this morning a big part of our worship. And uh, Susie's going to lead us in that briefly. And you can give. The link will be up, pinned on Facebook at kingschurchlife.com. Give. You can give after this. But why don't you lead us this morning, Suze? Yeah, brilliant. As we... Um come to think about our giving this morning, I just want us to think about two words and they're very different words. One is character and one is comfort. And God is much more interested in our character than he is in our comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through this time, as we've heard this morning, the message about resistance, um, it ties in really that God's more interested in growing us, in us learning and us becoming bigger people than he is in us being comfortable true. and so you'll see plenty of scripture to back that up but at the moment we're all in our houses and we see our houses as a place of comfort and I just want to warn us this morning and challenge us that as we're not physically meeting and we're, we're just in this place of you know the, the place of our homes where it's very comfortable let's make sure that we're still um, thinking about the character that God wants to grow in us true. let's make sure that we grasp every opportunity to develop our character yeah. during this time. And let's take every opportunity to learn, to grow. There's plenty of things that we're putting on for you to access online. And so we are still going to be um, 
keep into the habit of meeting together. A few people have referred to Hebrews 10 this week, uh, verses 24 and 25, where it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Mm. And we've kept on talking about that. We've banged that drum of making sure we're not going to give up on the habit of meeting together, even though we can't do that physically. But I want us also to not give up the habit of giving. I want us to think about like we do on a Sunday when we come together I'm speaking to you now church I'm speaking to regulars at Kings to just yeah. remind us um that we still need to think about giving we yeah. Th- yeah. still need to think about how we speak to other people how we reach out when we send a text message of giving but also to continue to give of our resources that mm-hmm. God has given with us and have given to us and I just want to warn against words like scarcity and lack at this time and remind us that God's got of abundance mm-hmm. God's yeah. got of plenty we yeah. live in the creation story yeah. that he had all of the resources of heaven available yeah. to him to bring creation about and that is still available to you so even if you are facing um financial challenges at this time we want to speak um plenty and abundance yeah. to yeah. you and encourage you this morning to not give up the habit of giving as well as meeting together. So we all know as regulars, there are two different ways of doing this. Um, And if you'd like to join us by giving this morning, you can go to our website and you can do that on there. Mm. But also if you've got our church suite app, please go on that and continue um, in the habit of giving at this time. That would be brilliant. Paul, can you just tell people some other ways of how uh, they can stay connected as well during this time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we're all at home, but we don't have to be isolated. We can still talk. Um, one way to do that, um, tell us your stories, obviously. Tell us what's going on. Stay in touch. Uh, email us at hello at kingschurchlife.com. And once again, um, if you've got prayer requests, uh, send them in specifically to pray at kingschurchlife.com. Uh, we're going to be checking those all the time and we'll respond to them as we can. So uh, keep keep your messages coming in, keep your prayer requests, keep your stories coming in. That'd be great. Meg, my Giants TV just went live on my phone. So you introduce what's happening with Giants. <laughs> oh, Giants is live now. It's absolutely brilliant. Even if you're an adult and you've got no kids, watch it and do... Connor can. Connor, I've tried. <laughs> I cannot seem to do it. But yeah, um, Giants TV and also on social media, Giants Kids Life. Yeah. Brilliant. Hope you've enjoyed it this morning, everyone. We're going to pray you out. Pastor Georgina is going to pray for us. And then please stick around on our Facebook pages. Go to Giants TV. Let's keep on doing church. Pick up the phone to someone that you've not spoken to in the past few days. Make contact. Just do not be on your own. We love you. Go on, George, you pray for us as we finish. Yeah, Jesus, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you love every single person who's tuned in this morning. Thank you, Jesus, that you want to be with them in their storm, that you are with them. I pray that they will reach out to you and ask you for your help, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you love them and you can calm storms. And may they just acknowledge that, Lord, and ask you into their lives and into the, this, any storm that they are going through. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious love that yes. holds us and anchors us in storms of life, that you never let go of us, yeah. that you never forsake us because yes. you were forsaken. You were forsaken on the cross for a time. So you took everything that we don't have to go through. We don't, we are never alone. Thank you. Your word says that you will never leave us, yeah. never Definitely. forsake us, even when we have forsaken you, yeah. even when we have left you and we have been away from you. Thank you, Father, that your loving arms are yeah. waiting to bring us back home. And if there's anybody watching or listening who have, have left you and have been away from you, God, I thank you that your arms are open wide to bring them back to yourself. And I pray that today this morning in april this palm sunday that they will make that decision to come back to their loving heavenly father who is full of mercy full of goodness and full of love in the precious name of jesus amen amen Amen. Amen. and big joke to um stephen and laidlaw who are watching from spain hi guys you've got better weather than us brilliant thanks for joining us everybody Derek, I don't know how you're going to pick the winners of this 
guess the animal competition. There's going to be a bit of war. So if you want to know more about that, email Derek at King's Church. He's going to be bringing Easter eggs to every home across the country. Easter Day. So happy Easter, everyone. Uh, have a great Palm Sunday. Stay in touch. If we can pray for anything, let us know. If you want to know more about Jesus, if you're new to King's, go to our website and click on the tab that says Jesus. And we've got loads of information on there. And we will see you at Table Talk on Thursday night, 8 p.m. on King's Central Facebook page. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy the weather. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.